An adaptation is a physical or behavioral characteristic that has developed to allow an organism to better survive in its environment. Adaptations are the results of evolution and may occur when a gene mutates or changes by accident. That mutation causes the organisms to better survive and reproduce and it passes on that trait to its offspring. It can take many generations to develop an adaptation. Body size is a fundamental constraint on adaptation because size has consequences for structural and functional relationship in animals. Surface area to volume ratio decreases with size, so that smaller bodies have larger surface area to volume ratio than larger objects. The decreasing surface area to volume ratio with increasing body size limits the transfer of material and energy between organisms' interior and environment. Therefore, an array of adaptations function to increase surface area for getting adequate exchange of energy between interior cells and external environment. Herbivores consume plants, carnivores consume animals, and omnivores feed on both plants and animals to acquire energy. Detrivores feed on dead organic matter. Animals get directly or indirectly their nutrients from plants. If the plants have low nutrient concentration, it can adversely affect growth, development, and reproduction of plants eating animals. Animals adapt to their environment by responding to variation in the external environment by being either a conformer or a regulator. Conformers are animals that induce internal changes in the body that is parallel to the external conditions. They are unable to maintain consistent internal conditions such as fluid salinity or levels of tissue oxygen. Echinoderms, which include the starfish, are considered to be osmoconformers since their internal body fluids quickly come into equilibrium with the seawater that surrounds them. On the other hand, regulators use a variety of biochemical, physiological, morphological, and behavioral mechanisms to regulate their internal environments over a broad range of external environmental conditions. They maintain the ion concentration of its body fluid within a limited range of values when faced with changes in the ion concentration of the surrounding water. Regulation of body temperature among mammals is an example of this category. Mammals make use of homeostasis in order to maintain a relatively constant internal environment amidst a varying external environment. Whatever the processes involved in regulating an organism's internal environment, homeostasis depends on negative feedback which means that when a system deviates from the normal or desired state, referred to as the set point, mechanisms function to restore the system to that state. All feedback systems consist of a parameter or variable that is focused off regulation and has three components, receptor, integrator, and effector. Receptor measures the internal environment for the variable and transfers the information to the integrator. The integrator evaluates the information from the receptor and determines whether action must be taken by the effector, and the effector then modifies the internal environment. Oxygen is required in order to release energy contained in food. However, since oxygen is easily available in the atmosphere for terrestrial animals, oxygen may be limiting for aquatic organisms. Many terrestrial organisms take in oxygen by diffusion across the body surface. Insects have tracheal tubes that open to the outside through openings or spiracles on the body wall. The tracheal tubes carry oxygen to the interior of the body by allowing diffusion to take place. For larger terrestrial animals like mammals, birds, and reptiles, they have lungs that have numerable small sacs that increase surface area across which oxygen readily diffuses into the bloodstream. Amphibians take in oxygen through combination of lungs and vascularized skin. Meanwhile, aquatic organisms take in oxygen from the water or gain oxygen from the air in some way. Whales and dolphins come to the surface to expel carbon dioxide and take in air containing oxygen to the lungs. Animals differ from plants such that animals can exchange energy with their surrounding environment. They can create heat through metabolism and being mobile allows them to seek out or escape heat or cold. The exchange of heat between animals and the external environment is influenced by their body structure. The interior of the body must be regulated within a defined range of temperature. In contrast, the temperature of the environment surrounding the animal's body varies. Thus, the body surface temperature differs from both air and the core body temperatures. Layers of muscle tissues and fat separate the body core from the body surface which allows a gradual change in temperature across the core to the body surface. 
This layer of insulation influences conductivity, which is the ability to conduct or transmit heat. Animals maintain its body core temperature by allowing changes in their metabolic rate and by heat exchange. The core area exchanges heat with the surface area by conduction. Influencing this exchange are the thickness and conductivity of fat and the movement of blood to the surface. The surface layer exchanges heat with the environment by convection, conduction, radiation, and evaporation. Terrestrial organisms are more affected in the external environment conditions than aquatic organisms. They receive more stress because air has lower specific heat and it absorbs less solar radiation than water. Thermal regulation. Some groups of animals generate heat metabolically to regulate their temperature. Internal heat production is termed endothermy, which results in homeothermy or the maintenance of a fairly constant temperature independent of external temperatures, while gaining heat from the environment is termed as ectothermy, which results in a variable temperature called poikilothermy. Birds and mammals are homeotherms or warm-blooded. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and other invertebrates are poikilotherms or cold-blooded. And lastly, heterotherms which employ both endothermy and ectothermy depending on environmental situations and metabolic needs. Some animals under this group include bats, bees, and hummingbirds. To avoid confusion among the terms, ectotherm and endotherm emphasize the mechanisms that determine body temperature while homeotherm and poikilotherm represent the nature of body temperature. Behavior exhibited by poikilotherms Poikilotherms gain heat easily from the environment and lose it just as fast. These sources of heat control their rates of metabolism and activity. An increase in temperature increases their rate of enzymatic activity, which controls metabolism and respiration. They become active only when temperature is sufficiently warm, but when temperature falls, their metabolic activity declines and they become sluggish. These organisms have an upper and lower thermal limit that they can tolerate. Most terrestrial poikilotherms can maintain a relatively constant daytime body temperature by seeking sunlight or shade. The range of body temperatures at which poikilotherms carry out their daily activities is the operative temperature range. They also have low metabolic range and a high ability to exchange heat between body and environment. Anaerobic respiration metabolism limits poikilotherms to short bursts of activity and results in rapid physical exhaustion. Aquatic poikilotherms, when completely immersed, maintain no appreciable difference between their body temperature and the surrounding water. They are poorly insulated. Any heat produced in the muscles moves to the blood and onto the gills and skin. Exceptions are sharks and tunas, which possess a reti, a blood circulation system that allows them to keep internal temperatures higher than external. Upper and lower limits of tolerance to temperature vary among the poikilotherm species. If they live at the upper end of their tolerable thermal range, poikilotherms will adjust their physiology at the expense of being able to tolerate the lower range. And fish are highly sensitive to rapid change in environmental temperatures. If they are subjected to a sudden temperature change, they may die of thermal shock. To maintain a tolerable and fairly constant body temperature during active periods, terrestrial and amphibious poikilotherms rely on behavioral thermoregulation. They seek out appropriate microclimates. Insects such as butterflies, moths, bees, dragonflies, and damselflies bask in the sun to raise their body temperature to the level necessary to become highly active. When they become too warm, these animals seek the shade. In the case of amphibians, because of evaporative water losses, they must be either near or partially submerged in water. By changing position or location, or by seeking a warmer or cooler substrate, amphibians can maintain body temperatures within a narrow range. Most reptiles are terrestrial and exposed to widely fluctuating surface temperatures. The simplest way for them to raise their body temperature is to bask in the sun. Snakes, for example, heat up rapidly in the morning sun. When they reach the preferred temperature, the animals move on to their daily activities, retreating to the shade to cool when necessary. Lizards raise and lower their bodies and change body shape to increase or decrease heat conduction between themselves and the rocks or soil they rest on. They also seek sunlight or shade or burrow in the soil to adjust their temperatures. Homeothermic birds and mammals meet the thermal constraints of the environment by being endothermic. 
They maintain body temperature by oxidizing glucose and other energy-rich molecules in the process of respiration. For homeotherms, the thermoneutral zone is a range of environmental temperatures within which the metabolic rates are minimal. Outside the zone, marked by upper and lower critical temperatures, metabolic rate increases. Maintenance of a high body temperature is associated with specific enzyme systems that operate optimally within a high temperature range with a set point of about 40 degrees Celsius. Because efficient cardiovascular and respiratory systems bring oxygen to their tissues, homeotherms can maintain a high level of energy production through aerobic respiration. Thus, they can sustain high levels of physical activity for long periods. Independent of external temperatures, homeotherms can exploit a wider range of thermal environments. They can generate energy rapidly when the situation demands escaping from predators or pursuing prey. To regulate the exchange of heat between the body and the environment, homeotherms use some form of insulation, a covering of fur, feathers, or body fat. For mammals, fur is a major barrier to heat flow, but its insulation value varies with thickness, which is greater on large mammals than on small ones. Small mammals are limited in the amount of fur they can carry because a thick coat could reduce their ability to move. Mammals change the thickness of their fur with the season, a form of acclimation. Aquatic mammals, especially of Arctic regions and Arctic and Antarctic birds, have a heavy layer of fat beneath the skin. Birds reduce heat loss by fluffing the feathers and drawing the feet into them, making the body a round feathered ball. Some Arctic birds have feathered feet, unlike most birds which have scaled feet that function to lose heat. Although the major function of insulation is to keep body heat in, it also keeps heat out. In a hot environment, an animal has to either rid itself of excess body heat or prevent heat from being absorbed in the first place. One way is to reflect solar radiation from light-colored fur or feathers. Another way is to grow a heavy coat of fur that heat does not penetrate. Large mammals of the desert, notably the camel, use this method. The outer layers of hair absorb heat and return it to the environment. Some insects, notably moths, bees, and bumblebees, have a dense fur-like coat over the thoracic region that serves to retain the high temperature of flight muscles during flight. As a refresher, animals can be divided into endotherms and ectotherms based on their temperature regulation. Endotherms such as birds and mammals use metabolic heat to maintain a stable internal temperature, often one different from the environment. Ectotherms like lizards and snakes do not use metabolic heat to maintain their body temperature but take on the temperature of the environment. Both endotherms and ectotherms have adaptations features that arouse by natural selection that help them maintain a healthy body temperature. These adaptations can be behavioral, anatomical, or physiological. Some adaptations increase heat production in endotherms when it's cold. Others in both endotherms and ectotherms increase or decrease exchange of heat with the environment. We, the humans, and these non-human animals share a number of behavioral strategies. For instance, elephants spray themselves with water to cool down on a hot day, and many animals seek shade when they get too warm. On the other hand, lizards often bask on hot rock to warm up, and penguin chicks huddle in a group to retain heat. Some ectotherms are so good at using behavioral strategies for temperature regulation that they maintain a fairly stable body temperature even though they don't use metabolic heat to do so. Endotherms have various ways of increasing metabolic heat production or thermogenesis in response to cold environments. One way to produce metabolic heat is through muscle contraction. Non-shivering thermogenesis provides another mechanism for heat production. This mechanism depends on specialized fat tissue known as brown fat or brown adipose tissue. Some mammals, especially hibernators and baby animals, have lots of brown fat. Brown fat contains many mitochondria with special proteins that let them release energy from free will molecules directly as heat instead of channeling it into formation of their energy carrier ATP. Animals also have body structures and physiological responses that control how much heat they exchange with the environment. Circulatory mechanisms such as altering blood flow patterns, evaporative mechanisms such as panting and sweating, and as we said earlier, insulation such as fur, fat, or feathers.